Mahalo for tuning into Island Focus and joining me in meeting Mele James, who is co-founder of Mana Up. Hi, Mele. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me, Lila. Please explain a little bit more to us about um, Mana Up and how you fit into this re-envisioning and redesigning Hawaii's economy. My co-founder, Brittany Hyde, and I uh, founded Mana Up back in 2017 to help build a product industry here in Hawaii. We've had many successes here with products. You know, you think about Hawaiian Host, Honolulu Cookie Company, but really we've had a lot of products that have been almost our best kept secrets. Mm -hmm. And so we started Mana Up to help build the business resources, mentorship, and access to capital for these entrepreneurs to be able to scale to global markets. Our accelerator program, which is part of our program, is a six month, once a year. We get about 100 applicants, we select 10, and really dive deep in those six months to find you know, what are their business challenges? What's the bottleneck for scaling? Is it shipping, you know, packaging, manufacturing, narrative, all those different things. And so we dive deep with the entrepreneurs to help them, them scale. And really with the criteria for the companies, they have to be headquartered in Hawaii as an economic development initiative. We think that's super important to build opportunity, jobs, and sustainable livelihood here in the islands. They also have to be a consumer packaged goods company. So CPG, which is Food, like value-add food, we're talking chocolate, honey, health and beauty products, home and retail products. And they have to be elevating the brand of Hawaii in some way. We feel like with a competitive advantage and being able to tell our own stories of Hawaii, the high quality products are all really important. So we've had 51 companies come through the program and we're really excited and we're actually graduating 10 right now. We have a big showcase coming up on November 20th, bringing Hawaii to the world. And this is kind of leading into, I think, really a lot of relevance for this topic around how are we re-envisioning tourism, creating it to be more regenerative. And part of this is creating this e-commerce. So, you know, online shopping and keeping Hawaii front of mind and being able to continue to bring new dollars into the state while tourism is not where it was so that we can continue to thrive as businesses here. So as you describe Mana Up, it sounds like it's a collaborative effort in the community. Yeah, it really is. We're, we're very grateful for the amazing partners we have. Our title partner, Kamehameha Schools, our founding partners, DFS, Castle & Cook, and many of our voyaging partners like American Savings Bank, Kaiser Permanente, and, and Ulu Pono Initiative. I could, I could list many for, for a long time. Um, Kings Hawaiian's been a great partner as well. So really, it's a, it's a collaborative effort where many corporate uh, entities have come to the table to support this economic development initiative. Really, at the end of the day, it's not about just supporting local products. Our program is incredibly regenerative, where you're supporting a program that's helping to grow even more entrepreneurs. So we think that's really exciting. And, and, and it resonates a lot with consumers where as you buy these products, you're supporting this program that's helping to grow even more entrepreneurs. Yeah, you have a physical location for Mana Up. We do. So we opened House of Mana Up at the Royal Hawaiian Center on the ground floor across from Tiffany. And really that was with our partnership with Kamehameha Schools and the Royal Hawaiian Center to create a test bed and prove the thesis that these local products do belong in Waikiki. We can have neighbors like Tiffany and Hermes. The store had been doing really well. We had to close our doors in March, but really people love coming in. Um, it, a lot of storytelling about the entrepreneur, around the product. What we're seeing now is people want those stories. Uh, mm -hmm. Back in the day, it was more about legacy brands. And if, you, you, if you, the whole world didn't know about you, people weren't interested in these micro brands, but everything has shifted now with especially millennials. They're looking at, you know, who's the founder? What's their story? What do they stand for? And we're really able to tell those stories and people are interested. So that's, that was what we were doing. Um, we reopened actually two weeks ago. Uh, it's picking up a little bit, um, but, but really the e-commerce has been game changing for us and many of our companies to continue to move inventory and sales and bringing Hawaii really to the world where if they can't come here right now, we can bring products to you. And this period of time that we've been sheltered in place, um, has actually been good for people to think about what they think about and maybe explore their own potential. Have you have you seen a growth in that self-esteem, I guess, for being a local person? I think so. You know, I think technology is is really everywhere. And technology is really leveling the playing field for a lot of our companies. You know, you can work from anywhere. You can run a business from anywhere. 
And so as we look at e-commerce, we look at digital marketing, we look at all these different aspects. I think that's creating a lot of confidence with our local entrepreneurs that are here in Hawaii that can continue to grow and build because, you know, we, we can be here in Hawaii, ha- have the best of the best of all worlds and, and continue to thrive. So I, I do see that a lot. And, and also just seeing the massive increase in online sales for our company. So to kind of complement tourism, it's not an either or. As tourists comes come back, as retail comes back, that's a great, but that shouldn't have that should never have been our only revenue channel. And a lot of our companies here really relied on that because it had been so successful for so long. And so really we can actually kind of double down on e-commerce as well as retail and, and continue to thrive. I don't think it should be a knee-jerk reaction to COVID. I think this is a strategy that we should have been doing all along, but now it's forced us to, but there's some silver lining. And it can really be around future proofing more of our businesses here uh, to be have an online presence and and be able to have a global market as as your customer, um, but also know that people love Hawaii and they'll be coming here too. What encouraging words can you give to those folks who maybe are unemployment, they've lost their jobs? Um, seems like there's a lot on the horizon that's possible for them. The way we did tourism was very old school, and and now new people are coming to the table. Different people are coming to the table to look at how do we create new ways of connecting with tourists, connecting with business. Right now is a very exciting time to be here in Hawaii as as so many things are shifting, but there's also a lot of opportunity happening and and we're seeing it right in front of our eyes at Mana Up. Well, thank you so much. And I know that you are not only a thought leader, but an economic leader. Thank you so much for joining us, Nellie. Thanks for having me, Lila. Thank you for tuning into Island Focus and getting to know Melly James, who is co-founder of Mana Up. Mahalo.